Yeah, so, so uh, just I wanted to, 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 to finish still some argument which I think was very instructive. So, uh, and then, then I'll try to speak about two other, two other relations of, it will show somehow the relation with classical combinatorial and information theoretic arguments. And then I sh should speak about two other things, about multi-source algorithmic information theory, so to say, and also about uh, a prefix, uh, algorithmic version of, of craft in a, a, a lemma or craft, craft inequality. So what we did, so this is the complexity of a pair, the minimal length of a program that produces a pair, and we have learned that it, it is bounded by these things, because we can take a, a minimal program for x, and then append a minimal program for y given, for which map to map x to y, and then we get up to this logarithmic turn, which is needed to, to, to show uh, for the separator, then we know we get a program to get a pair. But what is strange, how we can prove the other things, because here we have an arbitrary program for, 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 for pair, and how we convert it into a pair of programs. But this is made by some combinatorial cardinality consideration. So uh, it's more or less written there, but let me try to explain it just on the picture. So imagine this complexity is n. Then we have, uh, even if, if we know n, so if we know n, n is just log, log n bits. So uh, these terms of size log n are allowed. So we may assume that n is given to us, the value of n, not the program, but the value of n is given. Then we can start enumerating all pairs. all pairs x, y with complexity less than n or, or uh, less or equal than n. So we get, so it's just a mental process. We, 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 or or uh, this part is not mental, we can do this really. So we can just look for different programs of size less than, at most n and see which are terminating and which pairs they generate. So we get more and more pairs. So we get some pairs. And we know that this is, this is at most at 2 to the n, not to be exact, n plus 1 pairs. And then uh, the idea is, uh, uh, like we, we, we discussed with this, with, this, with this picture of a set. So we can uh, split the set in two parts. One, the, uh, one part has small foot footprint, and the other part has small uh, vertical size. But let me, let me be more formal. Let's look on our pair x, y. Our pair x, y is known to be among all these pairs. We don't know which one it is, but still, still it's somewhere and uh, so there are some other pairs with the same x in this set. And uh, let's imagine that we have about 2 to the m pairs. Say between 2 to the m uh, and 2 to the m plus 1 or something like this. So uh, we don't know, actually. Uh, we don't know this, this m. But uh, still, still we know that the number of the pairs here uh, is some number, and we consider the place mm, when, uh, when the, the, the place between two powers when it is. And so imagine that the oracle gives us uh, this m and this n. So imagine we know some oracle uh, gives us m and n. Both of them are of, of both o of log n bits. And we want to bound 
bound these things and these things. And so my claim is that com complexity of y given x is bounded by n minus m plus O of 1. And complexity of x, no, complexity is bounded by m, m plus O of 1. And complexity of x is bounded by n minus m plus O of 1. Uh, if, if Oracle gives us m and n, so actually uh, th there should be also O of log n. And the explanation is, uh, is uh, rather simple. So uh, we know that there is uh, at most 2 to the m plus 1 pairs of this, uh, on this vertical line. So if we know x, we can enumerate all pairs, I don't know, uh, x, y of, with this x of complexity at most n and uh, specify our pair x, y by its ordinal number. Which is actually m plus o of 1 bits. So the program for uh, the program for now the short program for x is uh, completely different. It's just the program for y uh, given x is is we just know the number of pair x y in the enumeration of all pairs on this vertical line. So if we know this number, then we can reconstruct the process and wait until we, this this pair appears. So. Uh, the program is of size m plus o of 1 plus, plus this because of, of it, uh, it uses m and n as advice. And this is for the, for, for, for the second term. It's m more or less. And the first term is actually n minus m. Uh, because uh, there, are, there are lines which contain uh, uh, more than two to the m pairs. Uh, I, I don't know lines, uh, big lines. And of course, since we have at most that many elements, we have at most two to the n minus m plus o of one big lines. So. Uh, and still in the process, looking, watching the process, we can discover this line, big lines, when, when they appear, uh, we enumerate all the pairs, then at some point uh, we, we see that some line is big, at some other point we see some other line is big, and so on. So they can also be enumerated. So if we have the ordinal number, if we know the ordinal number of x among the bad values of x, and we can wait that many steps, uh, we can get our x. So specify x by its ordinal number in the enumeration of bad lines. Or, or big lines, sorry. They are, they are some, for x they are good and for y they are bad, so, but they are big. Sorry? Why, why can't x be a small one? Ah, because we, we just choose m as a threshold in, in, in this way. Uh, so we know that there is some threshold just 2 to the m below the number of the size of the line. So uh, we select a threshold in such a way that x is guaranteed to be in a big line, just as the definition of bigness. And still, so, so we just estimate the number of this and that separately. 
No, infor informally you can say that if we what, what do we need to prove? We need to prove that if this is small, that either this is small or this is small. So let's see uh, whether it's x. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. this was, was, was trivial. Now we are trying to do this. So, 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 excuse me. I tried to prepare everything on the slide, but there are too many of them. So, uh, 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 so we know that pair is simple. Then we no, no need to prove that either x is simple or y is simple given x. So we look on all the pairs of the same complexity. It's, there are actually two, somehow two possibilities to say informally. Either there are many pairs with the same x or few. If there are few pairs, then y is easy to describe given x because we just say which, which pair it is. And if there are many pairs with given x, then x is among a uh, set of, of, of thick lines. And so we, we, we can uh, describe x by the number in the set of thick lines. So, and if we select the threshold like this, we just get, get exactly what we needed with logarithmic terms. So this is kind of, kind of flavor of this combinatorial argument. It was one of the, I would say, it would actually be the first uh, non-trivial theorem about Kolmogorov complexity proved by Kolmogorov and Levin independently. Uh, uh, there is even a nice story about this, which probably Peter can tell better than me. Uh, how they discovered this, but uh, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so, so this is uh, uh, the first first non-trivial result in in, in in Kolmogorov complexity. So this is this is one. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. He didn't have the proof, and, uh, and this it was something that really stuck me several months until I had one test book. <laughs> so it, it, it was not, it, it was quite not trivial. So I, yeah. I didn't feel I understand the theorem. Why yeah. Really yeah. So uh, if you understand the proof now, you should feel very uh, happy now. <laughs> okay. But what I want to say that this flavor of algorithmic information theory is already somehow present in Shannon information theory. Because if we look, for example, on the Shannon coding theorem, what does it say? We take, maybe I have a slide for this. No, I just let, let, let me say, <coughs> make an advertisement for tomorrow. So uh, that, uh, I was even asked about this, so it's a, a good time to say. So if we, we can, we have some, just one inequality for, for entropy. But uh, it, it also it involves conditional entropy. But if we have, uh, there we can consider generally all the possible inequalities for entropies. So here x, y, z are random variables, and these are real numbers, and there are some numbers for which this is true. For example, there is a famous inequality of, 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 of uh, basic Shannon inequality, which can be used to obtain almost all inequalities, except a very strange one. So, uh, then you can ask, uh, what what are the, all all the in, all the linear inequalities which are true for uh, entropies? And uh, there is a interesting and uh, mm -hmm. result about uh, com complexity that it's not only a, a informal informal correspondence, but it's just a formal statement that if something is true for complexities. It's true for entropy and vice versa. In one direction, something of this form, of course. No quantifiers, nothing. Just, just linear inequalities. And in one direction, it's somehow obvious, because if we have some inequality for complexities, we can apply it to, to long independent trials and get, as, as, as we discussed, and get the inequalities for entropies. So the non-obvious part and uh, interesting one is that if you have some inequalities for entropies, why it will, will be true for complexities? So you sh should start with the strings and provide imagine, con convert it to, to some random variables which somehow have the same properties, uh, as, uh, have the same entropies 
as the strings has complexities. And so this is what, what Andre probably can tell us tomorrow if you don't have other plans for your talk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, produces so, so then uh, it's a natural thing. Well, it's okay. It's a but it's you are recorded. Uh, uh, you don't want to be recorded. Yeah, for example, you have a one-way function, f which maps x to f of x, just n bit strings x is mapped to n bit strings f of x, and imagine it's reversible. Then the complexity of complexity of f of x given x, of course, is small, because you just uh, apply f. And the time bound at complexity, if you just restrict the programs to, to feasible programs, it's also small. But uh, there is, if, if we look at the complexity, uh, reverse complexity, uh, normally uh, without time bound, it's also small because uh, you can just enumerate all x until you find the pre image. But if you are interested in more ser serious time complexity, then it's probably n. So, uh, if we, unfortunately, we cannot have the theory for, for time bounded things because, because the uh, inequalities, th this equality is no more true, so to say. If we have x is this f of x and y is x in, 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 in one way function, then the pair x f of x is, where is, is as, as difficult as x. It will be n and complex for random x. Complexity of f of x will be also n because f of x is also a random point. And the complexity of x given f of x would probably be also n. So this is, this is the trouble, so we cannot hope the same thing. And actually there is a question whether we can do this for the sp bounded space. And for the bounded space, things are better. So all, all, all this, this, for example, the standard inequality, equality, Inequality and, uh, and this equality, they are true for bounded space. But mm, what is not clear, it was an open question, as, at least as, as far as I know, whether all the, you can all consider all the inequalities here, whether the Ramachinka theorem is valid also for bounded space. It's not, as, as, as soon as, as far as I know, it's not solved now. And with special cases with Chinese, uh, 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 this is what is called Chinese, in inequalities for, for which are non shannon inequalities. Uh, there are many of them and they are rather complicated, so I don't try them. But, but for them, it's not clear whether they are true with bound for bounded space complexity. Okay. So, assuming Romashenko's theorem. Yeah. Any set of linear inequalities that is true for. No, any, just one. In, one or or these any, or any, no, any inequality which is true for uh, Shannon entropies, is also true for Kolmogorov complexity with logarithmic terms, as, as, you, as here, and vice versa. So they're exactly the same dual cone of inequalities. The question is what this dual cone is, and nobody knows, and so on. But, but this, is, this, is, this is the same. So what I was starting to say is the, uh, that classical information theory also has some flavor of this. So imagine we have a Shannon coding theorem. What does it say? So maybe still I have a slide about this. 
Yeah, so it's a classical s settings. We have some random variable and we take independent copies of it. And then, so we have the serialized thing. And then we send them to encoder. And then uh, this channel is restricted by some bits, uh, some number of bits, m bits. And then we want to decode it to get back the string with high probability. So this is the classical Shannon setting. X1 to XM. XN, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. XM, M is the... the and the, the theorem says that this when it's possible, more or less, uh, it's possible when mm, we need n times entropy of x thing. But look here, actually, uh, x, x is serialized here. But this serialization is forgotten when we go to encoding and decoding. So here one, it's natural to ask why we consider the copies of this. We can put, ask this question for arbitrary, arbitrary uh, sequence. And then, then that's what we come if we assume that something is, that decoder is actually computable and encoder can be any, any, any function. So then we get, directly get the, the, the framework of Kolmogorov and Solomonov and Chaitin and so on. So it's already, already there somehow. Yeah, and then actually even there is a formal connection. So the Shannon theorem is more or less equivalent to the statement that if we have the, in, the independent copies of, of, of things, then the complexity of the, of the string with high probability is close to nh of x. So probability of, of this is close to 1. Because if it's close to 1, then decoder can find the shortest program and send the shortest program and encode it. And, and then, then it, it will be, the sender can sh 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 send the shortest program and then it can be decoded. So we get, get uh, Shannon theorem as a corollary. It's actually the, more or less the same statement. It's actually what, what the Shannon theorem says. And the, the analogy is even more uh, interesting and clear if we look at the multi-source information theory. And uh, then I, I, this is the old, old, mm, very old paper of Peter uh, and Kerner, Janusz Kerner, uh, I think seven, 67 or something, 72. or 70, 73. Or any, anyway, mo most of you probably were not able to read this paper when it did appear. So uh, what it's about? So we consider not one variable, but two variables, x1, xn. No, we have a variable xi, xy, and have to, to uh, make n independent copies, and then assume that Alice has, uh, not even, no, no, not, not Alice. Alice wants to have, Alice wants to have the, the x1, xn, wants to know x1, it's xn, and Bob wants to know y1, yn. And we actually know both of them. And we want to, to, to communicate this information, but we want to economize. So we send some common message to both Alice and Bob. And also we send some separate messages to Alice and to Bob. So for example, if X and Y are very close to each other, <coughs> it's much more efficient to send, they are almost the same. So we send the common bits, common values, and then send the differences, or something like this. So we want to have three messages, A, B, and C, such that uh, Alice knows A and C and uh, uh, gets the X's, and Bob knows B and C, and gets B and C and no, knows Y's. And the question is what, what are the conditions, what, what, what are the possibilities for the length of this message, when it's possible and when it's not possible. So uh, uh, the, the, the dream would be that we have a variable X, variable Y, we have a common information, so to say, and we have a, co a conditional entropy is x given y and y given x. 
And if we are uh, very optimistic or naive, we could say that let's send this common information to which is of size hy times n to a, a and b and send this, this, and this of size h of x given y. Uh, mm -hmm. So, and what Gatch and Kerner proved, that this is not possible in general. So for some variables, uh, it's possible. But for other variables, exactly with the same, with the same quantities here, this is not possible. And it was uh, already in this paper, it was considered in both, in both uh, information theoretic form and uh, in complexity form. So uh, if we are in general information theory, we are restricted to independent trials of x and y. But there is no such, such restriction. We can imagine that we have some string x, not no more uh, a sequence of outcomes, and some string y. And still we can try to send A, C, and B, which are, um, are strings, and together A and C encode X, and together B and C encode Y. And ask whether, whether it's possible for a given length, which length sh the messages should have. So we have an, in three-dimensional space some, re rate re so, so, some kind of rate region, but for algorithmic information theory. When the, and for a given pair x, y. So it's, it's not necessarily, uh, now it's individual question, for a given pair we can ask what is possible and what is not. And the state of affairs is that uh, we know that it can be hard, it can be easy, uh, there are possible bounds for this, for, for, for when, for this rate region, but it's not obvious uh, for, for some specific example it's not clear what the region is, actually. So the, there is a simple example. That if x1, xn, uh, not x1, xn, x, we have a two-dimensional space of a finite field. And we have a pair of random point and random line. So we have a random point x and random line y, which goes through this point. And somehow we want to send some common message to Alice and Bob, and then some additional things to specify the point to Alice, and some additional point th things to specify the line to Bob. And still, still, it's not clear when it's possible and when it is not. So at least I think it's not. I, I, I haven't seen it solved recently. And even if a strange thing that it depends somehow on the field, may may depend somehow on the field. So, so for some field, we have a better bound than for other fields, which is a bit stupid. But still, still, still it's the, uh, the unclear question. So it's very similar to multiple network coding. Sorry? It's very similar to, to multiple network coding. Yeah, but I think, I think the common information was historically yeah. one of the first really. ways of net. So it's, it's just a network. So we, we have a, a network and we have channels of, of limited capacity here, here and here. And the question is whether we are able, what, what the capacities are needed to send X and Y here. For random variables. Yeah, so if x and y are uh, serialization of some e e variables with finite range, then it's classical, this, then it's classical information theory. And you say it's solved? Yeah, yeah, so probably it is. Yeah, so I, I have to confess that I don't, don't know the, the answer, but I heard about it. But it, it's somehow solved for, for arbitrary, for, for, for serialized things. And still, still we don't have, actually this problem also makes sense for, for cl classical settings. We just consider a random point and random line. Uh, it's all, has all, we can also ask in a classical setting, not requiring any computability or whatever. 
Sorry? Are you clear about what is known for this problem that you just described? No, uh, so for, for, for serialized things. No, no, so for this specific problem of X and Y. And for, 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 for it's not known. So there is upper bound and lower bound. So actually, so you. Lower bound better than I, X yeah, you cannot do it optimally. So there is no, there is no hope to uh, uh, send the minimal, to make the total information minimal. A problem is, imagine that there is a two-dimensional plane over a finite field, and you take a random point and a, a random line going through this point, or a random pair. Oh, in, in terms of algorithmic information theory, you say that you take a pair of, of maximal complexity. But also you can think about this about as, 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 as a, a classical question, about uh, just random variables, random point and random line. And then our goal is to make Alice know the, the point with high probability and ma making Bob know the line. And what we are allowed to do, to send some common message of length C and some separate message of length A and B. And of course, in advance, we agree how they will interpret these messages, how we, they will decode the messages. And so the question is, in, in, in general, in the, just the region in three-dimensional space, in ABC a, space, rate region, when it's possible, when A, B, and C are large enough to make it possible. So actually, uh, line has two n bits. So in this picture, line has complexity 2n, and point has complexity 2n if, if P is 2 to the n. And then, then it's not prime, but, but still, we, OK. But so we have uh, two n bits for the line. We need two coordinates, and two, two coordinates for the Plane for the point, and they have three coordinates for the pair, because one equation that the point is on the line is just get cancelling n coordinates. So we have pictures like this. So the ideal way would be that we communicate n bits here, n bits here, and n bits here. But if you think, imagine you have a point and a line, and you want to tell something which helps to determine both the point and the line. But what can you say? If you say something about the point specifically, then you communicate uh, uh, information you don't want to communicate somehow. It also has some information, more information. Actually, it's a question about a uh, uh, combinatorial question. So probably expert maybe even know the answer. So we have a, 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 a set of all pairs point uh, point line, uh, xl, which x is in l. So we have x here and have l here. And then we have the, the, ed, uh, the point that goes through, through the line form a, a set. So we have 2 to the n, uh, 2 to the 2n points here, 2 to the 2n points here, and the set of size 2 to the 3n. And then the question is how the set can be covered by rectangle. So you take a combinatorial rectangle, arbitrary one, and you want to know how many points are there. What is the density of the set in the rectangle? It's exactly, actually, the, exactly, it's, it's Ilya Rosenstein no, noted this, pointed this out to me, that the question about the density of points in the rectangle is exactly what we are looking because then we can find a cover by probabilistic argument. So maybe an expert in the rectangle knows this answer, no? What is the reference to, to get to figure out what's known about this? Do you have a paper that you can discuss? Oh, the, the, there is a paper of, uh, uh, I think, 2000s. It's a paper in, in at, at, at least, at least it's definitely there is a reference in this textbook. So I, I should say that there is a, on the web page, which you can see here, there is a textbook in English, translated in English, about the Kolmogorov com complexity. And there is a chapter about this common information. And there are all the references. No, but, but this is just a problem. Probably you know the answer even without any looking at the reference. So we have a, a binary relation. X is, is incident to a line. And we take a combinatorial rectangle in the space of lines times points. So uh, how many points can it contain? In terms of the size? In terms of, this, of the size. You, we want for a given size, 
Imagine we want a square, for example. For a given size of a combinatorial square, we want to find the maximal density of this point. There is an obstacle, obstacle for this density, because <laughs> you never have two lines and two points lying that are on both lines. So you, you can, this is an axiom of geometry. So there is no, no four full rectangles of size two times two. And this means the density is square root of things. But the question is whether uh, is, is it the best possible and whether we can find, find such a thing. And I, I think actually that the, the serious people who are dealing, uh, doing combinatorics never looked at this question. So maybe it's well known. It's just I don't know. So, but, but still, still I don't know the answer for, for, for this. So another thing uh, uh, was what already I was asked about this is Slepian Wolf. And Slepian Wolf, we were considering a very special case of it. Imagine we have also variables x, y, and Alice knows x, and Bob gets y. And Bob also wants to know to know x1, xn. And then, uh, so uh, Alice needs to send some message. But the idea is that to send a short, maybe she can send a short message because Bob already knows y, y1, yn, that are related, uh, that they have, they are dependent with x's. Uh, so what is the length of this message? And even if, if, if actually Alice knew Bob values, then will be just a standard Shannon coding theorem, and it should be h of y given x times n. But what Slepian and Wolf tell us uh, that even if Alice does not know uh, Bob's values, she still can send a message of about this length which will be for Bob enough to reconstruct x, no, sorry, it should be x for, sorry, 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 x given y. So, but still, still, Alice does not know, need to need, know Bob things, so to, uh, she can send something uh, of, of this length, which for Bob will, some fingerprint of this length, which for Bob will be enough to construct, uh, to restore x's. And then there is a counterpart of this special case of slepian wolf theorem and also in a similar counterpart of a general case. So this is a classical complexity, information theory. And this is algorithmic information theory, how it says, Alice has some string x. Now x is a string, no structure, serialization structure, just any string. And Bob has a string y. And we are looking for some string m, <coughs> and uh, we want first that m is almost a function of x, that m doesn't contain any information which is missing in x, so this should be zero. So here, uh, here Alice knows only x1, xn, and should send some message. She doesn't know why. So here also message a m is uh, computed by a short program from x. And also we want that after the message m is received, then the comp x can be reconstructed. So the complexity of x uh, when known m and y are known is also close to zero. Of course we can send just entire x then this x given x is zero and x given m and x is zero. But the question is how short the m should be. And we want ideally that the m be as short as possible, which means that uh, s is just equal to complexity of y given, no, x, sorry, again, again, x given y. So this is exactly, exactly the same uh, ideas as about the length and, and, and restoration as in slepian wolf theorem. And indeed, it was, it's qu quite non-trivial. It used... 
Yeah, okay. If actually, we can write the length of m to be more close, but if complexity is small, we can just replace it by the program for m. So it doesn't matter whether we have length or complexity. So we want length to be small, the same. And so you can use some kind of expander or, or argument or... Uh, so it was discovered by Andrei Muchnik and the same ideas, but not in these settings, was by, by uh, Fortnoy and Lamplant. Uh, but all, all they use some kind of expander or uh, randomness extractor technique or something like this. So uh, mm, this, this would be the uh, combinatorial version of Wolf-Slipan theorem, uh, an, an algorithmic version of Wolf-Slipan theorem. It's indeed, and it's again true. So it's, and somehow it's even more natural because again here we have the same problem. We, we assume this to be serialized, but we don't assume anything about the, the, the message is pr produced arbitrarily. So the serialization is lost somehow uh, in, the, in, the, in the question. So why, why should we restrict to the serialized input if we want to do this? Yeah, so this is, this is a second example. And then, then I'll try to... Sh uh, and that is all the story. And this is the Pian Wolf story. Okay, now there is a mm, more... Uh, uh, part which is less probably will be less convincing for information theorists because I want to say that there are, there are some kind of bad news. The bad news is that there are many versions of complexity. So if you heard, uh, maybe there exists, uh, there was, uh, uh, initially there was Kolmogorov, then Levin and Chaitin, uh, as usually later, invented the same uh, alternative version which is called prefix complexity. And then there was a decision complexity and there was a, a monotone complexity about which probably Peter will speak also. So there are several versions and I will explain in a while what is, why they are different, what is the difference. But uh, the good news is that as information theorists you may ignore this difference because they are all close. For strings of length n they are uh, log n close. So the difference is rather small. So I tried to explain what are the what are the possibilities. Actually, even even things are worse made worse by the different authors who tend to, to denote the same thing by different uh, name, different letters, and even worse, they use the same letter for different things. So uh, you should be very careful with all this. And uh, but uh, there is also some other thing which is a priori probability, which I want to to, to, to say more. In a, in a while. And so there are, uh, it's, it's actually, I, I imagine this should be, should be very unpleasant surprise why so many and maybe we should select the one. And, and, and uh, so the answer is that since there are many because there are two ways to look, uh, there are different topologies, so to say, on the inputs. So we may imagine that we get a tape, infinite tape, and we read bit by bit, and we read some bit string, or we write some bit string or something like this. And also we can imagine that the something is given as a finite object completely, so we do not need to, 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 to know, uh, we, we know where it's, the end is. So this, and there are two combinations for these things, and they co create four combinations for the, for the mm, complexities, and all, all we mentioned they are. And if we have com conditional complexities, this, there's also topology on conditions. So we have eight, which makes things even worse. But as I, I told you that uh, you should not care because for inequalities, for example, even the questions with up to logarithmic precision are not solved. So you can easily, but recursion theorists care a lot, I should say. And the last thing which I want to say in a remaining, I don't know uh, how many, five minutes or six minutes or what? Well, no, actually, uh, yeah. Okay, five, five. okay. I would tell, there, there, there is something which is called craft shading uh, lemma or the Levin theorem about uh, a priori probability. So uh, the idea is, that instead of trying to describe, to give a program for something, we can consider some rand randomized algorithm, 
which has some output distribution. So it, it's, we push a button, it starts doing something, and then it suddenly may produce some string x. Or it may be uh, doing, some, do, doing something for, for all, uh, not, not producing anything. So just we have some possible outputs. So each algori algorithm of this type creates some distribution on outputs. So, so each string has some distribution to appear as an output. And the sum of this outputs of this probability is at most one. And again, uh, there is the best uh, algorithm, most diverse algorithm, which can simulate any other algorithm. So there is so for every algorithm p, we have some distrib distribution p m, and there exists some universal algorithm u for which p u is maximal. <laughs> just this probability are maximal up to a constant constant factor and it's even easier to understand to explain why it's the case just this you first toss a coin to decide which algorithm it wants to simulate and then simulate this algorithm so with some positive probability this constant it simulates every other algorithm so there is it's guaranteed to be to be large. And so there is some maximal function which is defined up to a constant. And there is a theorem of Levin. I discovered this usual by Chaitin. And uh, it says that log minus logarithm of this uh, probability is, is exactly the complexity of x. Assuming this is a different complexity, it's a prefix complexity, when one program is not allowed to be a prefix of another program. So it, 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 we can d get the same theory for, for, for this prefix version. But what, what I want to explain, this is a kind of a... Uh, to return to, to what we started. So initially, we started with the probability distribution, uh, which has probability, different probabilities, and we found a code of length 3, 3, 2, and 1. And this theorem does the same in a general case. So the complexity is the minimal length for the optimal prefix code, and probability is just the probability for the universal a priori distribution. It's, it's called discrete a priori distribution. And as in finite case, these things are uh, equivalent. It's not difficult to prove, but it requires some game and so on. So I prepared all this, but uh, <laughs> no. But still, still, it's more or less uh, standard standard argument with with this coding with some improvements because. We need, we need uh, this to be more computable than usual. But st st still, this is a basic tool which relates uh, uh, probability, a pr priori probability and complexity. And it's, uh, again, uh, we can, let, let's finish with a philosophical note. So uh, there are, if, if, if we have some object, I don't know, genome or whatever, there are two measures of how peculiar this object is. The first measure is how long it, it takes to describe this object. And the second measure is how rare it appears if we just do random things in the most random and general random way. And still they, they are different, dif philosophically different quantities, but uh, the theorem says that they are mm, essentially the same up to a constant. So. Uh, Objects which appear often in the universe are objects which are easy to describe. This is a kind of uh, overstatement, probably, but if you want to say in one philosophical sentence what is this so theorem about. Yeah, can I just add one more yeah okay, I'm finished. So now, now, now you can.
Shakespeare's work will come out if you put a monkey at the time, time travel, whatever. Well, these probabilities are the ones that you get if you put a monkey at the computer. Because, no, just at least as, as, as big, because maybe monkey have some output distributions. This is the output distribution, of course. Of monkeys. And so the universal output distribution is even bigger than the monkeys, no, up no, to a constant. Yeah, yeah, no, this is the universal. No, if you put the monkey at the computer terminal, right, to write the program. Oh, not, 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 to, not to write it in a text no, editor. No. So you, you write an interpreter of Python and send a monkey, yeah. and then wait to, for Shakespeare's uh, poem to appear. This, this, this will be exactly <laughs> exactly this one, because the, comp the, the Python, pro Python is universal language. So we'll get exactly this. And here we want just to, to compress our Shakespeare uh, piece as perfect as possible to write a very short program which pr reconstructs this completely. And then, then they are uh, philosophically and even technically related. So Thank you. Yeah, yeah.